What the Flick special edition of What the Flick. It's special because it's just me and Christy. Christy. It's very cozy. That's right, very cozy. Uh, and it's a romantic comedy. Oh just my God. The, just the two of us. Our favorite. Mm -hmm. It's a romantic comedy that many of you saw seven months ago. <laughs> when it was called No Strings Attached, this time it is called uh, Friends with Benefits. It is. They've been, the two sort of cliches for that type of relationship they've nailed. Mm -hmm. I wondered if in either one of the movies they debated calling it the other one. Or is there a porn version coming out called Fuck Buddies? <laughs> I'm waiting for that, because these weren't naughty enough for me. You, uh, you win. Thank uh, you. Please, um, describe the so film. So, Ashton Kutcher and Natalie Portman star as best friends. No, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Mila Kunis and uh, who's Justin the guy? Timberlake. JT, the yeah. triple threat. I do love me some JT. Um, they star as friends who are gorgeous and clearly attracted to each other, but they are wary of falling in love, so they agree to just have sex. And we know where that goes. Take a look. I just feel like we should chill for a while. I think we should take a break. You're breaking up with me? It's not you. Of course it's me. It's me. I don't like you anymore. You said that I was your soulmate. I did? When? When we were at that bed and breakfast having sex. You know, that doesn't... That doesn't what? Count. I'm done with the relationship thing. I'm emotionally unavailable. I'm emotionally damaged. You know what I'm saying? No emotions. Just sex. So I guess we should just start. Bedroom. What's wrong with the couch? The bedroom has better light. And since we're just friends, I don't have to be insecure about my body. Come on, you're beautiful. You have nothing to be insecure. That sounds emotionally supportive. Lock that down. Your ass is a little bony. Much better. I can work with that. Okay. Should be fine. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! I don't know what you're doing. I can't see you putting on your black underpants. Jamie, baby, I missed you. Oh, baby. Ah, did your boobs get bigger? It's just sex. That never works. Nah, you don't get it, bro. Jamie's different. She's no different. What do you know about women? You're gay. But the offers still keep rolling in, naturally. Look at me. Come with me to LA. You'd be a great distraction for my family. They'll love you. All fast talking and brusque like I'm bringing home a carny. Uh, Are those braids? Yeah, he was going through a crisscross phase. I can't believe you used to like them. I didn't like these guys. I don't even remember. Don't try to compare us to another bad little fat. I'm the man in a bag. Give you something that you never had. How close can we get to the sign? This is it. All right, come no, on. No, 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 wait. They take this seriously. What's it? No, we're getting too old for this. Sex? Casual sex. You feel so college -y. Oh, I could sing some Third Eye Blind. Okay. Closing time. One last call for alcohol. That's not Third so Eye Blind. I'm pretty sure that's Third Eye Blind. Nope. I know you, I you have a boat. I live in Jersey. And I ain't taking no ferry. Unless it's out to dinner and a show. Bam. So one of the big differences in this movie, as opposed to No Strings Attached, is that uh, in, no, in this movie they, they meet and form their friendship. In No Strings Attached, they'd been friends uh, for some time. For a long time. Yeah. Yeah. But this, mainly the difference is, is that this one is like embraces being rated R. And this one is good. That, that part's different, too. <laughs> now, they have a ton of chemistry. Yeah, they do have some chemistry. They yeah. do, and they're gorgeous. I don't gorgeous. know about a ton, but they, no. have, they have chemistry. I know you have some reservations about JT's acting chops. I do, and I, I, I think he's a tremendous performer, mm -hmm. and I think he is uh, interesting to look at. And I don't mean like because he's good looking, I mean he's got something. Mm -hmm. and, and I bet in two years he'll probably deliver a great, you know, he's been good in these smaller roles. He's great in Social Network, yeah. he's great in Alpha Dog. But here he is yeah. carrying the movie. Mm -hmm. And there were just some moments that required some drama that I didn't think that he's, that my hunch is he'll look at and think, nah, I'm gonna have to get better. And my hunch is he'll, my hunch right. is he'll get better. Because he has a work ethic, because he and cares. And he just, he, yeah, he cares and he's got it. He knows how to work the camera, it's just not quite, not quite there yet. Yeah, and this is fun. I mean, they just, they have this really playful, light banter, but there's also like an edge to it. There's some very subversive one-liners here. Yeah. There are jokes about like, being Jewish and Puerto Rican and Scientology, and it goes places that I did not expect it to. It doesn't feel gratuitous. No, no, the Jewish it, it the, Ju the Jewish line was uh, spectacular yeah. about how there are no Jewish models. Right. I loved it. it yeah, but the, the joke, except for Barbara Feli. Who? Barbara Feli. Oh yeah, right. But she's Israeli. Yeah, well, that she's. Um, but no, <laughs> you know, no American Jews. There you right. go. So. Um, by the way, no, by, the, good. by the way, I'm sure there are tons of Jewish models. I'm sure the world is silly with Jewish models. Who is an American Jewish model? I don't know. I couldn't, like, <laughs> you named, Bar I pretended like, I, Not I don't know. Not Marissa I Miller. I can't name one model. I don't know models. Not Marissa Miller. Anyway, so, um, but Mila Kunis is, is gorgeous, and he's gorgeous, and they look great together, and they have a lot of fun. Christy Brinkley's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> and those Ralph Lauren ads. Yeah, totally. You can tell. Um, Just look at her. But 
it also it, it makes fun of the romantic comedy conventions and then, and then lapses into, into them, which we kind of saw coming, but it does it on its own terms. I mean, it, it's still very knowing and, and kind of winking and making fun of them, but does it in, in a different way. So yeah. I didn't hate that about it. No, and I didn't think there was too much. First of all, I don't care about hypocrisy in general. I, I sort of like hypocrisy, but I didn't feel like <laughs> it was so bad uh, because they never took themselves too seriously when they were condemning the, the, the sort of the genre. When they were mocking it, they weren't like, look how much better we are. So then when they slip into it and do it themselves, it didn't. Yeah. It doesn't feel dishonest. It was playful. As a great yeah. supporting cast, you have Patricia Clarkson as Mila Kunis's mom, but then you have Richard Jenkins as Justin Timberlake's dad, which is this very awkward attempt at providing substance and fleshing out his character and his backstory in a way that just grinds the pacing to a halt, and it's uncomfortable. It's really awkward to watch. Yeah, it was terrible. I wonder if it had been an actor of less stature than Richard Jenkins, whether somehow it would have come out, whether they could. I mean, I guess it's too much of the movie to take out, but man. You don't it, need it. You, you no. can flesh him out and his apprehensions about commitment and his totally. insecurity yeah. in some other way. You know, and, and, and ha the idea of having him, his father's got some, his father is losing control of his mind. That's mm -hmm. the idea. But once you have that in, that was okay. That gives him a little depth mm -hmm. of character. But then when they move to sort of have this be the, the, the moment that pushes, or the situation that pushes JT to realize mm -hmm. the nature of who he truly is, mm -hmm. that's when it became truly, truly painful. Very hard to watch. Yeah. And But other than that, about 10 or 12 minutes, that was really the only part that was... It was hard to watch. Yeah, there's a, a funny it's little just, running gag where um, Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis are watching this fake romantic comedy, yeah, which good. is like the absolute worst, you know, parody of romantic comedy with Jason Segel and Rashida Jones. That's very funny. So there are great little individual moments scattered all the way throughout it. And yeah. Jenna Elfman is delightful. I always think Jenna Elfman is delightful. She I do plays, not, but you, she's good in this. Yeah, she plays um, his. Uh, uh, she plays uh, uh, JT's. Uh, JT. I've never called he him is. that until today. You can. Then, now I'm, now. It's, it's a good, safe little shorthand. No one will condemn you for this. JT no one like will condemn wonderful. you for this. Um, uh, <laughs> she plays his sister, yeah. and I just think she's vibrant. And but interesting that shortly after one of her scenes, one of the conventions they take a shot at, in addition to the romantic comedy convention in general, they take a pretty big swing yeah. at Scientology. It's very funny. And it's right after a scene with Jen Elfman. Um, and they also take, like, there's a rare moments here because they take shots at specific brands, which I have not seen. You've seen product placement in films. Mm -hmm. But I saw this as some, there was some anti-product placement. Like what? They took a hit at Barnes & Noble. Right. And they took a huge hit at T-Mobile. They do, but then they totally embrace GQ, Shinerbach, right. I mean, very specific brands of, of beer and wine. Sure, and, but I, that's yeah. what we're used to. But here, are those, yeah. these are like ant. They're like I, I don't know who took out the who took out the who who used who paid to have them rip Barnes and Noble, yeah. and who paid to have them rip T-Mobile. Yeah, but I mean, it's interesting. I, who do you you don't really see that sort of specificity? Yeah. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. But basically, it's raunchy. It's like raunchy. The, that's sweet. It is, but there's orgasming. There's, there, there's really awkward orgasming. There's awkward it's orgasming, good. yeah. So it, it was fun. I was yeah, surprised. And, and, and we got to just say one thing about Mila Kunis. She's delightful. Oh, she's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, she she's can, good, too. No, she, there's, I mean, as she showed in Black Swan, there is way more to her than just being, you know, the ditzy, pretty girl that she played on, like, that 70s show or, you know, doing Meg on Family Guy. There's a lot more to her than that. And, yeah, gorgeous. But before we do, I, we got to compare the movies just a little. I want okay. a little, because here's the, uh, this is raunchier, it's better, but I believe that the movies are almost identical, not so much in the story, they're incredibly similar, obviously. Slight little differences. But the think about who's in these movies. They're the same person. Like Natalie Portman <laughs> and Mila Kunis. Are the same person. They're on Swan. exactly <laughs> the same star level. Yeah. You know, Natalie Portman has a little, she's been there a little longer, and she now has an Oscar. But it's from the movie. And she went with to Mila Harvard. And, she, so she's got, and that's one of my problems with No Strings Attached yeah. with Natalie Portman, who I think is a wonderful actress, is that she, I feel like she's too substantive for a silly role like that. So I had trouble buying her. She's not as comfortable playing light. Playing light. She right. doesn't have the Julia Roberts thing that lets her play light and then lets her do drama right. too. But also, the tone of No Strings Attached gets really draggy. And, and the, no, the conflict that keeps them apart, the obligatory conflict, um, it's just contrived, and you don't... Which one, which one are you talking about? In No Strings Attached. Yeah, yeah. Here, it makes sense that they have these apprehensions, and they have yes. these mis miscommunications, I mean, and, they're, and they're pissed at themselves and pissed right. at each other. Like, yes. that makes sense. But No Strings Attached, it's like... No, it's silly. Oh, we have to be apart briefly because the, you know, the, the script, the genre calls for it. No, no, and it was dull, No Strings Attached. Dull, 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 at times. It was bearable. But, um, but also Ashton Kutcher and JT. Again, <laughs> they're the same star. 
They are the mm. same magnitude, almost identically. I would say that Justin Timberlake is a bigger star than Ashton Kutcher. That much. He made, is a, a multi-talent But Ashton threat. Kutcher is a big freaking star. He has a lot of Twitter followers. Yeah, they're both like <laughs> the same demographic, the same thing, the mm. same appeal to women, the same men aren't threatened by them. It's identical. Mm. The, the casting of these movies is essentially, like if you're like, let's get Justin Timberlake, we can't, let's get Ashton Kutcher. Mm. Let's get Natalie Portman, we can't, let's get Mila Kunis, or the other way around. And the second movie turned out better. And the second movie uh, definitely turned out better. I don't believe, I believe that there have been uh, what do they call the things when everybody shows up and dances somewhere? Flash mob. Yeah, they have. That's a that's mm -hmm. a that's a plot device in uh, Friends of Benefits. Yes. I don't believe there has ever actually been a flash mob in the world, but they're all over movies and television. There are lots of flash mobs, and if Justin Timberlake is indeed this high-powered art director, he should know what they are. Yeah, there there aren't as many as there are in films. It's not something that <laughs> happens that much anymore. It's already so. It's already, so <laughs> not only am, so you're saying I'm wrong, and I've missed it. Like but, it's already yeah. over? But it was a romantic idea in this movie. No, it was stupid. It was foolish and it, it was a you painful You know moment. that you thought it was kind of sweet and you were smiling quietly to yourself. I thought the movie was sweet. <laughs> the flash mob that gets uh, contrived. They, should, they were, they were uh, contrived to do a voice. There basically, are two. Like, basically, yeah. It's like having too many montages. But it was, <laughs> um, uh, but it's dirty and it's funny and guys can see it without women. I, yeah. Yes, guys can see it without women. All right, there you go. So you're or number? with. Seven. I'm going to do seven and a half. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, so, so seven, seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter. Uh, go see, uh, which one? <laughs> go, see go, see friends friends with go see Friends with Benefits. Go see Friends with Benefits. It's basically delightful.